and today we are going to be talking about what I call acceptable synthetic materials for uh, forming jewelry out of. First of all, here's some stuff from Italy. It is a glass. It's super sparkly. And uh, this is called Goldstone. This has uh, been artificially made in Italy for many years. I'm sure it has kind of a great history, but uh, the sparkle is incredible. And um, I took a picture, well, I'll tell you when I show you the blue one. This is Goldstone, and what a gorgeous color they picked. All right. So typically that one will be referred to as Goldstone. Now this is, the trade name of this one is Blue Goldstone. And I, I took a photograph of this stuff and I will tell you what, it looks like, it looks like one of those deep space telescopes. These shines without a filter come out like uh, pointed stars. It's just unbelievable, this stuff. And it is made in another color. That's the green. A very deep forest sort of green, and look at that, radiate. Yes, very nice, uh, lovely. There's a little, you can see some very mild concentrations where there was some settling of the material. Um, yes, it's very special, very special. So I will work with this. I like synthetics that cannot be easily confused with um, natural materials. Now here's one that's really pretty remarkable. This stuff is called volcanic obsidian. And what it really is, is a type of glass, like a slag glass, uh, that is infused with volcanic ash. And thus it takes on all its uh, gem-like characteristics. This is a pretty little cut right here. And for, um, one of the books, I took a photograph. Oh no, I took four photographs that I wanted to use and they were so beautiful. Um, every one of them looked like a different, completely a different world in blue. It looked like um, underwater sort of scenes in all kinds of different colors. And so I was able to use two of them, I think, or one. I will revisit that because I'm still in the act of uh, editing and I'm a, well, anyhow, it's complicated. So the rough for those is this right here. And this is what I was taking photographs into. It's got a very special gl glow to it. And it's just such an unusually gorgeous piece. Here's a sort of a reverse uh, conchoidal fracture happening there. Okay, great. As I struggle with the viewfinder, some. All right, and moving along. So there are some things I do not abide well. Um, for example, take a look at this. This is a very convincing looking um, artifice of a uh, spider web turquoise. And it's so it is 105.5 degrees outside today, and my camera went out. So I'm going to try to pick up where I was. 
And uh, as far as I remember, I was showing this little piece. It's a reconstituted turquoise. And turquoise is something that I am super careful with. In fact, in the collection, we only have maybe about three or four turquoise roughs. And that is because they are so hard to verify these days. And there's a lot of trickery going on. When I meet you in person, please be sure and ask me about which countries I feel are the safest to deal with when it comes to today's gemstone trade. I might be able to give you some useful guidance on that. Here, this is also a fake. This is a sujolite that is supposedly made of sujolite material. I don't know. Nonetheless, it's too perfect. It's a cute piece of costume jewelry. There's no, no doubt about that. But if, but I think it's also wise to develop your eye on things like sujolite so you see what they actually look like in the rough and they're nowhere near this perfect. In fact, they're already rare to begin with. To find one that is, that has a field that's anywhere near as clear as this, it would be very, very difficult to do today. I found just what I wanted to show you. This is a natural sujolite rough. Uh, I just weighed it. It came out at five ounces and seven tenths. And so this thing right here is very expensive today. Um, and I worked it a little bit, so it looks terrible. So uh, let me get it wet and see if we can see a little bit more of its natural glory here. Yes, and so look at this. This thing in the in nature would be very hard to acquire, and you notice that it's not perfect material. It's modeled. Um, it has, you know, you're, you are looking at several scratches from, uh, I think I worked it on a machine a little bit, I was trying to get to the to the heart of it and get some of the stuff off the outside. Um, but this right here is a natural sujolite rough. So when we look back at the other one, you're gonna see how is it that someone could take an, a material so expensive and just powder it down and reconstitute it like that. Uh, so the whole thing is extremely fishy to me, but I found this gorgeous thing and uh, I knew that you would probably love to take a look at it. That is a sujolite. Oh, yes. Okay, so back to where we were. Here's a really interesting, sort of a new thing. And it is surfite. Some may pronounce it surfite. Uh, whatever. But this is from... This is a material, a resin, that comes from the production of surfboards. So this piece to me looks like it came from the very bottom. Hold on, I should have gotten this wet. It looks like it comes from the very bottom of the the uh, thing, the receptacle that holds the resin as it drips down from the surfboard production. And there's a ton of color in it. I have a little cut piece right here. And I hope that's backlit because it really is gorgeous. It has very deep colors. I'm having a hard time holding still and steady. Let's see what we can do. Uh oh. Okay then. This is a uh, graphite it is from shoot i think it's I, i'm not sure where it's from but it is fluorescent this you can't see very well because i messed with it a little bit but i would not recommend this material to a novice cutter because it is not in the the person uh, i bought this from was honest with me and told me it didn't it's uh, less cured, but there are a lot of very nice Motor City uh, colors on there. 
and it cuts incredibly well. In fact, on the trailer to the Modern Roxane channel, you will see that I cut a little kite shaped thing, cut it in half and made a square out of it. And you'll see the colors are just fantastic. And for the sake of this video, I may go in there and cut a straight cut through here, which should be glorious. Uh, however, if I would try to cab it, the sides will start to look kind of like a gray duct tape. So this is probably good for somebody who can use a kiln, but I, I, I'm not making any recommendations. This is just my first hand observation. Okay, and so right now, I think that's pretty much uh, what I've got to show you that I can show you out here. Um, I may go into the studio and take a closer look at some stuff and get to cutting. I want to cut a piece of four of Fordite. So I will show you the results later. Um, thanks again for being here and I'll see you next time.